little skeletons, it's Disney Queen Skelly here, and welcome back to another top five favorite video. So this one is for my top five favorite superheroes. Now, I am not the biggest fan of superhero movies. I very, very rarely will watch them. But nonetheless, there are some that stand out among the rest that actually really catch my attention and that I really love watching. So here we go. My fifth favorite superhero is Ant-Man. Overcoming his criminal past, Scott Lang follows in the tiny yet mighty footsteps of his predecessor as the size-changing hero known as Ant-Man. Ex-con Scott Lang uses high-tech equipment to shrink down to insect size and fight injustice as Ant-Man. So why is Ant-Man my fifth favorite superhero? Well, I really love the story of Ant-Man. I mean, not just because, you know, he's sarcastic and funny and, you know, an overall, I think, a great human being. But this, the, the movie was told really, really well. I really liked how they laid it all out. I really liked the plot of it. I really liked, you know, how everything was set up. And, you know, it's funny because, I, like I said, I'm not really into superhero movies. And that's one of the superhero movies that I can say I am very much into. I would love to rewatch it again. And I still haven't seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, which I really should, you know, actually get on to doing. But, you know, it's it's just a great story, and I always am rooting for, you know, Scott Lang, and especially with, you know, um, with, have, with what happened in Infinity War and Endgame, you know, that was a really cool sight to see, and especially because he's always good for, you know, a good laugh. My fourth favorite superhero is, or, you know what, should I say, Vigilante, Green Arrow. Billionaire Oliver Queen uses both his wealth and his unmatched archery skills as the Justice League's battling bowman, Green Arrow. Although he is a commonly thought of by many as just a modern-day Robin Hood, the Green Arrow is so much more than that limited description would lead you to believe. Born to a life of wealth and privilege, Oliver Queen took it all for granted until tragedy struck at sea, leaving him alone on a deserted island. There, Queen had to dig deep to find out if he had the inner fortitude to survive. While stranded on this island, Oliver honed his already formidable archery skills into becoming the greatest archer ever known. When he finally returned to civilization, he embarked on a career as an ur urban vigilante, attempting to rid the streets of, home of his hometown of Seattle and also Starling City from crime and corruption with nothing but a bow and arrow. Viewed as a pampered playboy by the outside world, Green Arrow cares more about the plight of the poor and the suffering in America, perhaps more than any other costume superhero, a social justice warrior in the truest sense of the word. Although an imperfect man prone to making mistakes in his personal life probably more than most other costume crusaders, the Green Arrow is nevertheless one of the greatest heroes in the entire DC Universe. Whether fighting solo with his paramour, the Black Canary, or with his fellow heroes, the Justice League, the Emerald Archer is one hero anyone would be lucky to have at their back. So I'm just going to clear this up now. Um, I am not really into DC heroes. I am more into the DC villains because... In my opinion, I feel like they have more of a backstory and more of a reason for doing what they're doing. With the heroes, obviously, there is something there. I'm not saying there isn't. However, when I watch these movies, or with, when I watch these like shows and when I hear about all of the superheroes that are involved with the DC Universe, I can never find one that I particularly like. When I was younger, I really liked Superman, but nowadays, I never really got into Batman like most people in my childhood, and it was always just the villains that stuck out to me. But when I was in high school, um, my ex introduced me to the show Arrow, and I loved it. It was great, really action-packed, the villains were fantastic, and it was overall just a really good TV show. And ever since then, I've always wanted to show it to anybody and everybody who would watch it with me. And I'm currently showing it to Hubby, and he's loving it, especially because he knows a lot about DC and Marvel because he read the comic books. So whenever he's finding, like, superheroes and supervillains that he's recognized, he gets all excited and, like, super giddy about it. So I'm just, I love, I love the Green Arrow. I love what he stands for. And I can't wait to get further into the Green Arrow uh, lore in the show Arrow because I'm only on season five. Unfortunately, things happened after that where I just completely stopped watching the show. But um, I'm hoping to finish the show soon, hopefully by the time you watch this, so we'll see what happens. My third favorite superhero, or again, should I say anti-hero, is Deadpool. Real name, Ray Wade Wilson. Occupation, mercenary. Legal status, citizen of Canada with a criminal record. Identity, secret. Place of birth, Canada. Group affiliation, none. First appearance, New Mutants, number 98. History. The foul-mouthed mercenary no now known as Deadpool was once 
little more than medical waste, written off as a miscarriage of science and technology by the directors of the Canadian government's Enigmatic Weapon X project. Were its name known outside certain highly specialized circles, the Black Ops Initiative would have boasted a distinguished, if blood-spattered, track record. Previously, its technicians had spanned a number of noteworthy sessions, including the Feral Wolverine, Maverick Mutant Advent Adventure, and the Savage Sabretooth Psychotic Murder Machine, and they had looked forward to an uninterrupted string of success. Enter Wade Wilson. Diagnosed with cancer, the gun for hire left the woman he loved and accepted an unorthodox offer of salvation. Playing upon his hope for a cure, the Weapon X scientist attempted to recreate Wolverine's genetically endowed healing factor through artificial means. Although successful, the Byzantine procedure left Wilson's epidermis and face a horribly, a horribly callous mess. Considered a failure, he was consigned to a prison laboratory for program rejects. Unable at first to accept his mangled appearance, Wilson slipped into the darkest pits of his soul. He killed several guards and escaped, dubbing himself Deadpool, after the facility. Sometime later, he re-emerged as one of the world's foremost mercenaries for hire. After cementing his reputation as a soldier of fortune and quasi-superhero Deadpool, signed on the dotted line for the terrorist known as Tolliver. His target? The time-tossed mutant freedom fighter called Cable. Deadpool learned that his former lover Vanessa Carlyle, the shapeshifter named Copycat, was posing as Cable's girlfriend and teammate, the probability altered Domino. Wilson launched repeated offensive against Cable and his mutant strike team X-Force, culminating with a battle in which Tolliver was killed and Vanessa seriously wounded. Deadpool show showed mercy on his former flame, diverting a portion of his powers to her healing her injuries. Escaping custody in a mental asylum, Deadpool gained the attention of the inter interdimensional firm of Lando, Luckman, and Lake. LLNL believed Deadpool to be the Mithras, one who would usher in a new age for the uninhabitants of Earth. But the prophecy was a sham. The being destined to bring the era to life actually would transform the planet's inhabitants into mindless grinning boobs. Deadpool averted disaster, but internal politics with LLNL brought an end to their relationship. His optimism again shattered. Wilson returned to his status as a kill for hire. Height six foot two inches, weight two ten pounds, eyes brown, hair none. Known powers Deadpool possesses the normal strength of a man and of his age, height and build who engages in intensive regular exercise. Deadpool's only known power is the superhuman healing factor, which is a recreation of one possessed by the mutant Wolverine. He is an extraordinary hand-to-hand -hand combat and skilled in several unarmed combat techniques. Deadpool employs a number of weapons, including various blades and guns, which he utilizes as both a master marksman and swordsman. He also relies on a teleportation device to whisk him in, at, in and out of danger. You know, one of the main reasons I think I think why I like Deadpool as much as I do is because he is such a dick, but he is also very caring. Like, he knows what he needs to do, he knows what the target is, he, he basically doesn't question anything. You give him a reason, you give him a name, he does it. And that's it. And especially from what I've seen through the movies, because I haven't read the comics, but I've seen through the movies and with his love for Vanessa, it's absolutely insane. I see how much he cares for her, I see how much he adores her, although I did not know that she was supposed to be a superhero. That was, like, never explained to me. God, I should start reading comics more. But anyways, yes, Deadpool is a wonderful anti-hero that I love watching, I love hearing about, I love learning about, um, especially because it was very different seeing a superhero like him when I went to go to the, when I went to go see his movie in theaters. First one I saw with an ex of mine, second one I do believe I saw with Hubby. So it was just fantastic seeing something different on the big screen regarding superheroes rather than the trope of, oh, they're going to rescue us and, you know, happy, happy, everyone's fine in the end type deal, kind of like the Avengers. No offense to the Avengers, I love the Avengers, but, you know, you know what I mean. My second favorite superhero is Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. Despite Super Spy Natasha Romanoff's checkered past, she's become one of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s most deadly assassins and a frequent member of the Avengers. Trusted by some and feared by most, the Black Widow strives to make up for the bad she had done in the past by helping the world, even if that means getting her hands dirty in the process. I would just like to say outright that I love Black Widow. She is such a badass. She is so unbelievably strong, talented, determined, headstrong, all of it. And, you know, I feel like with girls, you know, we... I don't really want to, like, sound 
to like I don't really want to sound like a feminist here but I also don't really want to like offend anybody here but what I believe with with Black Widow and Captain Marvel and all of the strong you know women superheroes you know I'm just really gonna focus on Black Widow for now there are a bunch of strong female superheroes that can be really good examples to young girls and to young boys you know to show that you know we can fight alongside each other we can bring justice together as a whole rather than maybe just relying on one person and I firmly believe Black Widow is a great example of someone of a, of a woman who can teach young girls and even young boys that you know you can be strong no matter who you are or what you are or what your background is and I think that's true for any superhero and just one of the main reasons why I love her so much is because she is so determined to make the world a better place even with her bad past she's wanting to redeem herself in showing that she cares about those who she fights for and she cares about those who are closest to her she's not going to back down from a fight if you give her a reason to fight and that's why I love Black Widow so much but she's not my favorite superhero my favorite superhero of all time is Iron Man Tony Stark genius billionaire philanthropist Tony Stark's confidence is only matched by his high flying abilities as the hero called Iron Man Inventor Tony Stark applies his genius for high-tech solutions to, problem, to problems as Iron Man, the armored Avenger. So if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I don't remember why Iron Man is my favorite superhero. I just know that he is. And I'm pretty sure it's because I'm drawn to the really sarcastic asshole type superheroes. And I think that's pretty much it. He's a good dad to his daughter, he's a great husband to Pepper, and I think he's incredibly talented, incredibly smart, and you know, with... Jarvis, or I think now Friday, no, Friday's not who he has. He has someone else, it was, it's not Jarvis anymore, I think Spider-Man's the one who has Friday, I need to do my research, but anyway, bottom line is, he's incredibly smart, and yeah, he can be an ass at times, but when he sets his mind to something, he gets it done, much like all the other superheroes that I mentioned on this list today, and especially when it comes to his family, Again, much like the other superheroes, he loves. To, he will protect them at all costs. He is not the type to stray away from a situation where, you know, he needs he needs to help save the world. And I really love that. Even though his love is tough love, people know that he means well. I mean, probably other than the movie Civil War, but <laughs> what are you gonna do there? Anyways, I thank y'all so much for watching this top five superhero favorite superheroes video. If you have any favorite superheroes for yourself, let me know in the comment section down below who they are and why. I would love to know. And on that note, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. I love you guys.